Hey everyone, this is Shashank. I hope you all are doing well today and I also hope that you all are watching my AWS videos as well. So as you can see on my screen, today we are going to discuss another storage topic from Amazon AWS which is EFS, Elastic File System. So first of all, we're gonna learn what EFS is all about, what are the benefits, what are the use cases and at last we're gonna do a lab, a hands-on which is very necessary for any topic to cover up. So EFS is a NFS file storage in AWS cloud. It's basically a shared storage. When I say shared storage, what does that mean? We can create EFS and it can be shared among multiple EC2 instances. So basically you, you can have a common location of your data and multiple EC2 instances can access those data. So we can create a file system, we can mount it on Amazon EC2 instance, then read and write data to and from our file system. There's one point to note, uh, EFS is supported by Linux system. As of now, we don't have a support on Windows environment. So it uses NFS protocol, the version is 4.1. It's very simple in nature, elastic, scalable, as well as durable. So when I say simple, it's AWS manage. So you just have to create it once. Rest of the things are get managed by Amazon ad background. Elastic, uh, so basically it's elastic and scalable. What does that mean? It shrink, it expand the volume basically as per the requirement. So let's say we have a hundred GB of storage and let's say another 10 GB of storage is getting added. So it will gonna expand the volume at background automatically. And let's say we have uh, 100 GB and we don't require uh, 50 GB of data. So let's say we have only requirement of 50 GB of data and we have 100 GB, then it will gonna shrink down the volume as well. So that will help us to save the costing. That's where EFS is quite better as compared to the other volumes. So what benefits we have? It's managed by AWS all the updates and everything it's done by AWS at backend. Very high throughput, scalable and highly available as well. So when I say highly available, it means we can have this in multiple availability zones. It's durable, so data can be stored across multiple availability zones. Concurrent access can be done. So there is not a problem of locking will gonna happen. So it can be, as I said, it can be accessed, accessed from multiple uh, EC2 instances. So the concurrent access can be done over there. Shared across multiple EC2 instances, low in cost, infrequent access via APIs, low latency. So performance wise is quite better and it's based on SSD. So what are the use cases that we have, where we can use? The major uh, part of this can be used in the content repository thing. The big data analysis, uh, there we can use EFS. The home directories purpose can be used for EFS as well. So I hope uh, the briefing of EFS is quite clear for you all guys. If you have any question on the EFS side, just place out a comment in comment section. I'm gonna uh, reply on that particular question. So now the time for is to do a lab. So what we have to do in terms of lab, I have jotted down some points. So we're gonna have two instances. So the reason of creating two instances, just want to show you how you can edit the data or edit a file that can be visible to an, another instance as well. So the sharing mechanism can be shown over here with the help of two instance. You can have only one instance as well, but that will serve uh, the purpose where you can you, you have only one instance you can access the data from EFS volume. The sharing mechanism cannot be done using single instance. Then uh, we're gonna create a, a security group to open NFS port, which is I guess 2029, I don't remember that. Then we're gonna use, uh, create EFS, Elastic File System using above security group. We're gonna mount EFS on both the EC2 instances and we're gonna test the mounting as well. To perform this lab, we're gonna go to our AWS Management Console. So this is my AWS Management Console. So first of all, we're gonna create two EC2 instances. 
So for that, go to services, compute and EC2 instance. This will take few milliseconds to come up. Here we go. So we're gonna create two instances. As you can see, I have like few terminated ones. So basically I use the free version uh, to show up the demos. Like I create T2 micro and I, once my demo is completed, I delete those instances or any of the resources that I use in AWS because that comes with the costing. Click launch instance, we're gonna select Amazon uh, Linux. You can have Ubuntu as well. Then we're gonna have general purpose, which is T2 micro. Next. This is the default VPC that I have. I haven't created a custom VPC. So you can, so ideally uh, in a production environment, you can create a custom VPC of your own and create your EFS volume. Preferences, uh, let's say I'll have in 1D availability zone, rest of the options are kept default. Add storage, we get eight gigs of uh, storage with Linux instance. Next, tagging. So we're gonna give name this as EFS web server one. I'm gonna have uh, SSH open from all over the world. So you can see uh, I have created NFS security group already. So let's see the port. Uh, not this one. Okay. So this is the NFS 2049 and it's open from my VPC subnet only, the CDO. So let's see, let's select the SSH, review and launch, launch and the key pair is Windows. That's fine. You can give any any name. I'm gonna have another instance created for this. T2 micro configure the detail. Let's say 1C. Storage tagging and name EFS web server two. Again, I'm going to use the existing one, SSH, review and launch, launch, launch an instance. So this will take a few milliseconds, uh, not few milliseconds, I would say this will take like uh, nearby less than a minute to spin up an instance. So for me, for a, for a time being, we're going to go to our EFS, we'll, we're going to create the EFS volume. So it's in the storage section. Click EFS. So we are into the Elastic File System console. As you can see, it's scalable, elastic, and fully managed cloud native NFS file system for $0.08 per gig. That's the costing we have, which is almost 80% of your storage is getting saved using EFS infrequent access. So basically, uh, it's not a standard storage as we have in S3, but to it's very uh, clear and visible way of doing the sharing mechanism. If you want to share your volume or storage, it's advisable to use EFS, not S3. So we're gonna create file system. As you can see, we have three options. So this is the default VPC that we have, let's say, I'm gonna not select all the availability zones. Let's say we have 1C and 1D. The default system, I'm in mean the default security group, I'm gonna remove that and we're gonna use NFS security point, which is 2049. We're gonna get the IP address. Uh, let's say it's automatic. Next. There are a few options for the naming convention, the tagging, I'm going to leave that as of now. You can define the policy, the lifecycle policy, let's say after 14 days. So if file is not accessed uh, in last 14 days, then you can uh, use the lifecycle policy to move that to a different story or you can delete it. Throughput mode is bursting and the performance mode is general purpose. You can use maximum input output as well and you can use the provision. That depends on how the requests are coming to your storage section.
you can enable the encryption of the data at rest as well using KMS. Next. So this is the review screen and we're going to create a file system. Okay, this will going to take again a minute to get created. It's already created, but uh, the availability of uh, the mount target will take some time. So let's go to our EC2 instance. It's still spinning up. We're going to try to SSH into it. So for that, let's go to the terminal section. This is my terminal. Okay, let's my pem key is present in downloads folder. So the command to SSH into a box from Mac is SSH hyphen I pem key then EC2 hyphen user at the rate. Let's take the public IP because we have to RDP from my system. So I have opened it from all over the world. Enter. Yes. I want to connect and I guess yes. I'm connected to my system and I'll gonna use sudo su into the root. So let's open the other as well. Let's try to connect to other web server as well. Copy my public IP. We'll go to the downloads folder. Let me maximize a bit. Okay. SSH hyphen I windows EC2 hyphen user at my IP. Yes, I want to connect. And here we go. Yep. Let's do sudo su. I'm into the root. Okay, let's go to our file system. So our uh, servers are available. We are connected to that. Let's go to the file system to check the status of our file system. It's still into the creating state. So for a time being, for mounting a file system from Linux machine to EFS, we need a utility called NFS. So for that, you can see we have three options. Amazon EC2 mount instruction from local VPC, which is like from my system, the VPC that we have created, uh, we are using the same machine. So that's basically a local. You can do a peering. When we say VPC peering, you can do it from region to region. You can do it from uh, zone to zone as well. And from on-premise as well. So let's say you have an on-premise data center and you want to connect to a storage which is available in your cloud, you can do using on-premise as well. So we are into local zone. So let's see the instruction. So Amazon is quite intelligent enough to provide you all the instruction that uh, we require to create EC2 instances, sorry, to create EFS storage. So these are the instructions. So we have to install EFS. So if you are using Amazon Linux, then use this one to install the EFS mount helper. So we're gonna go to our instance. This is my first instance. Okay. Let's paste it. This will gonna install the utility. And we're gonna install the same utility on the other server because both are Amazon EC2 Linux. Okay, it's completed. The next set of instruction is like SSH into a box and create a EFS directory, a mount directory basically. So let's follow the instruction from EFS. We're gonna create EFS over here. I'm not going to create the same, uh, I would say, yep, that's fine. So we have to mount on from both the servers. So we're gonna create EFS directory from both the server. It's already created, I guess, yep. 
we have EFS created on both the server. Let's see our uh, EFS is available or not. I hope, yep, it's available. So the next set of instruction, use NFS client to mount the volume or use EFS mount helper to mount the volume. Let's use this one. This is the ID that we have. So let's see. This is my first server. Paste the command, hit enter. Here we go. So if you do df hyphen h, and you can see this is the DNS for EFS that we have and the mounted on home EC2 user EFS. Okay. So let's go to EFS folder and let's see if we have nothing. Okay. So we're going to create one file touch. Let's say hello.txt. Here we go. And we're going to give some data into it. So I'll use nano hello.txt. Let's say hello world. And we're going to save this. Yes. We're going to see if text is there or not. So for that, I'm using cat. Here we go. We have a text of hello world present inside hello.txt file. Now, on the second server, this is my second server. As you can see, 34, 2, 38, 51, 162. And I have created everything on first server, which is 385, 12, 213. So first of all, we're going to mount the EFS from this machine as well. Let's paste it and hit enter. And if you again do df hyphen h, you can see the mounting is already done over here. Now, if you do, if you go to EFS folder and do ls, here we go. On second server, we haven't created any of the text file. We have created text file on the first server. We created some data into it like hello world text inside this one. So, and this is present. So after mounting EFS on the second server, my hello.txt file is present on the second server as well. That means the file, the storage that we have created is shared different, shared between two different servers. Let's do a cat to check if we have same data. Okay. Hello. As you can see, we have same data of hello world present on second server as well. So let's try to do one more thing. Uh, let's do nano. I'm doing on second server 34 to 38. Okay, let's add one more line. Welcome to my channel. Let's save it. Yes. So I have done an addition of one line on second server. Let's see. Yep. Hello world and welcome to my channel. Let's see if it has reflected to our other server or not. So I'll gonna do cat again. And here we go. So our mounting is working correctly. Our EFS has been shared uh, between two different server as well. So this is the way how we use EFS. So the best way to do a practice, a demo on your account, try to uh, create an EFS mount point. So try to create two different servers, create an EFS storage and mount it from two different server. See what result you are getting. And just let me know if you have any concern or if you are facing an issue. I'll be there to help you right away. Just place out a comment in the comment section if you have any concern on the EFS side. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.